Dear readers, listeners, and of course friends, once again I'm dragged from the peaceful silence of death to confront the latest putrid offering in the podcasting wasteland. Today's travesty, a dialogue between Jordan Peterson, the patron saint of sophomoric drivel, and Roseanne Barr, the queen of collapsing careers and risible grievance-mongering. Prepare yourselves, for this dissection will be merciless. Peterson's introduction could serve as the new standard in vapid verbosity. Perpetually he drones on and on, with the faux gravitas of someone who believes he's solving the mysteries of the cosmos instead of hosting episode 452 of Auditory Chloroform. Peterson promises insights into topics as riveting as voice acting for a Daily Wire cartoon, and the trials of being a female stand-up comedian in a world that demands basic human decency. Barr predictably spirals into a self-aggrandizing rant about her role in Mr. Burkham, a cesspool of mediocrity from the barely literate minds at Daily Wire Plus. She swoons over the joy of being purposely offensive, as though spewing bile is the pinnacle of comedic brilliance. Peterson, ever the sycophant to controversy, nods along as if he stumbled across the Rosetta Stone of humour. Their mutual admiration society is built on foundations as sturdy as a house of cards in a wind tunnel. No, one doesn't need an advanced degree to see through their transparent attempts at victimhood. Barr's incessant whinging about cancel culture is nothing more than evasion of accountability dressed up as valour. She weaponizes her own idiocy, portraying herself as some sort of martyr for free speech, when in reality, She's just peddling the tired old trope of the misunderstood genius. Peterson, in his usual fog of verbosity, equates this to a broader fight against collective evil. Ah, the straw man, the favourite plaything of the intellectually bereft. Peterson's laughable attempts at profundity continue apace as he misguidedly elevates humour to a sacred endeavour that disperses darkness. One might be tempted to laugh were it not so tragically asinine. The duo laments the sterility of intellectual elites, while basking in their own brand of dumbed-down contrarianism. Peterson decries the lack of humour in academia, blissfully ignorant of the rich history of intellectual satire. It's a classic false dichotomy, working-class comic good, academic wit bad. Their contempt for those who dare to think deeply rather than pander with populist drivel betrays a profound insecurity masked as bravado. As Barr recounts her struggles with cancellation, self-inflicted lest we forget, Peterson laps up her drivel without a flicker of critical thought. Her complaints about being deplatformed for her so-called jokes fail to mention the racist, bigoted undertones of her remarks. They engage in a masterclass of confirmation bias, constructing an alternate reality where accountability is tyranny and offensive speech is heroic. The conversation veers into the realm of Trump worship, reaching new levels of lunacy. Barr praises Trump's comedic genius, yes, you read that correctly, while Peterson nods like a bobblehead on a dashboard. This is the fallacy of equivocation at its ugliest. They conflate Trump's vulgarity and demagoguery with masterful satire, glossing over the havoc his words have wreaked. Their sycophantic lauding of a book of Trump's tweets as a comedic masterpiece is so preposterous it defies satire. Their biblical excursion is a cringe-inducing exercise in reductionism. Barr attempts to distill complex theological narratives into setups for lame jokes, while Peterson predictably offers no challenge. Their take on the Israelites' complaints in the desert, meant to illustrate human ingratitude, devolves into a banal gag that misses the existential profundity entirely. This is reduction ad absurdum, taking the profound and rendering it pathetically shallow. But we reach the zenith of absurdity when Barr extols Joe Rogan's Austin Comedy Club as a sanctuary of free speech. It's a risible justification for their shared disdain for accountability, cloaked in the language of liberation. Their entire shtick is a grotesque mixture of false equivalencies and intellectual laziness, masquerading as defiance of the woke mob. Their hypocrisy is staggering. Barr, crying victim, and Peterson, her enabler, both perched high in their ivory towers, decry the so-called elites. Their dialogue is a self-congratulatory circle jerk, licking each other's wounds while lobbing poorly constructed arguments at imaginary enemies. It's a festival of pandering to their base, devoid of a single iota of critical thought or genuine engagement. And of course their adulation for Trump's populism, which they equate with authenticity, is a pernicious appeal to the ad populum fallacy. 
They ignore the realities of his demagoguery, instead portraying him as a paragon of comedic brilliance and truthful rhetoric. Peterson's complicity in this twisted narrative is as disappointing as it is predictable, further laying bare his intellectual spinelessness. This podcast episode is a car crash of cognitive dissonance, a festival of logical fallacies, and a testament to the degradation of public discourse. Peterson and Barr's conversation is a repugnant blend of arrogance, ignorance, and false victimhood, a farcical parody of intellectual rigor. Dear friends, reject this insipid morass of mediocrity, demand better, seek out discourse that challenges, enlightens, and elevates rather than this rancid garbage that insults your intelligence and pollutes our cultural landscape.